Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I'm George. We're all George. So today we're starting out the new week. But in the US, markets are closed. Does that matter? Because Bitcoin never closes. And today I want to talk about something that's happening within Coinbase that's quite alarming for Bitcoin, of course. So let's talk about the supply level at Coinbase, unprecedented levels. It's concerning. And let's talk about several alts that are doing quite well. So let's do it. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. By the way, I did have I did have my Sunday walk video yesterday on my other channel, Cryptos R Us Plus. Uh, a lot of you guys watched it. And a lot of you guys guessed the chart correctly. But the first person that guessed it, holding this address, sent that person a hundred dollars with the pit. So make sure you play along in the future and there'll be better and better rewards and more opportunities in the future. So make sure you tune in. But anyways, we're starting out. We're starting out right around 52. We're hovering between 52 and 53, 54. I saw we touched upon uh, fit. No. We touched upon 52.4, yes. Last night, this morning, we're at 52. This is predictable. I told you guys that this is important. This is an important uh, level. This is important resistance. And I said, I think Bitcoin's going to stay at this level for a while. And that's exactly what's been happening. I mean, when I say a while, I don't know what a while means. Right now, it's been about, what, four days? We've been hovering this level, even though we had a few shakeout dips like this. It really meant nothing. And I told you guys, it's it's absolutely nothing. Don't be fearful. We're right back above, right? So let's see if we're ready for that next leg up. So today, Wall Street is closed. Like I said, U.S. markets are closed due to President's Day. Tomorrow, however, that's when things can get really, really interesting. And we could be ready for that next leg up because we've been consolidating here for about a week now. But talking about Coinbase, several things that are happening. Coinbase, of course, one of the biggest exchanges on the planet. Almost every ETF provider uses Coinbase as a custodian. But something happened just recently that... Well, something's been happening for a while, but something that's just happened recently. Take a look. I mean, this is hard to see, but I'm going to remove my camera. You can see on the very right side, you have that giant red bar underneath. That just happened yesterday. Uh, what are those giant red bars, you may be thinking? Well, they're withdrawals. That was about a $1 billion withdrawal last night. Okay, not take that back, not withdrawal, not withdrawal. I take that back, but basically a exit outflow. Okay, so normally when you see those, that means someone bought massively. Okay, and you can see over time, there has been a lot of outflows. But right now, according to Crypto Slate and Glassnode, Coinbase is down to about 20.5 billion in their overall holdings. Okay, so you take a look at this. Coinbase is now back to 2015 levels. 2015 levels. How high was Bitcoin back in 2015? Um, about a hundred dollars. Okay, so Coinbase levels are dropping. Supply. Bitcoin supply on Coinbase is dropping like a rock right now. And that's quite alarming. Just, I think a month ago, when I covered Coinbase supply, it was around two, uh, it was around double. It was around 44 billion. That was before the ETF started buying. And now they're like less than half of that. 20.5 billion. You may be thinking, well, 20, 20.5 billion sounds like a lot. They're not going to run out anytime soon. Really? <laughs> when these ETFs are buying half a billion per day? You do the math. How long does that go last? <laughs> That's going to last like a month and a half. 
Okay, that that's how fast things are moving right now. You may think 20.5 billion in total for Coinbase sounds like a lot, but these ETFs, they're getting their Bitcoin from somewhere. They're buying either OTC or spot. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what Coinbase is going to do since their supply is so low. They're going to get down to like a few billion and Coinbase is going to turn these guys away. And then it's going to get really interesting. Okay, just keep in mind, there's only so many Bitcoin out there on the planet. And there's very little entities that hold this enormous amount of Bitcoin. But if the ETFs are buying like half a billion per day, 20.5 billion will go really fast. Within two months, it's out zero. And you know Coinbase is not going to let their reserves go to zero. That would be ridiculous. Then the Coinbase premium will be at like a thousand percent when you try to buy Bitcoin. They're not going to let it happen. So I wonder what their like threshold or, or their cutoff point is. How low they go before they just tell the ETFs, no, you're not going to get any more from us. Go somewhere else, right? That's exactly what's happening. People don't understand how much these funds are buying every single day. So now today we have a closing so these funds not buying tomorrow they'll probably start buying or tonight they'll start buying coinbase i mean they're they're gonna run out so fast so so fast if you look at blackrock blackrock is already up to six billion fidelity is already at 4.4 billion arc is at 1.4 billion bitwise at 1.1 billion okay and these numbers are going to continue to go up. They already add to more than what Michael Saylor holds within MicroStrategy. And even with Grayscale also continuing to sell, it's not enough to go around. And we're just talking, I'm just talking about ETFs here. What about non-ETFs? What about people that are just buying? What about, what about whales that are buying? right and what about institutions and public trade companies that prefer to buy physical bitcoin they're buying too so the supply i'm telling you guys i've been saying this for a while the supply is disappearing right in front of our eyes it's my worry i've been saying this even in my sunday video my worry is this is the last cycle that that retail investors uh, can buy cheap Bitcoin or accumulate a significant amount of Bitcoin because after this It's no more Bitcoin will be too expensive and, and again, and this is very telling too I don't know why this is happening. Like I don't know who is actually bearish and who is selling but apparently a whole bunch You look at what happened today yesterday last seven days last 30 days who's been selling their Bitcoin, approximately about 31,000 Bitcoin sold. All from retail investors. From retail investors that hold anywhere from 0 0.001 Bitcoin all the way up to 100 Bitcoin. I don't know why at this point anyone would be feared out of the market. With so much going on and the supply shock happening, I don't get why people are selling it. As if people are thinking this is the top. It's certainly not the top. But again, to prove my point, what the institutions are doing and the whales and the large, really rich entities out there, what are they doing? <laughs> they're, they're buying. They're buying and buying and buying. Like today, I don't get... This might this might have been from yesterday, not today, by the way, because this is this was posted uh, yesterday. But still, why would you have so many people sell? And then guess who's buying, right? All the entities they bought more, more than double of what was sold, right? I mean, it's it's crazy, it's crazy. Retail investors are falling for the trap and just selling to the big boys. And the big boys continue to accumulate more and more and more and more and more. Don't let that happen to you guys. Don't be feared out of the market. Again, I don't know who is fearful of the market right now. I, I don't quite get it. 
but the, the data does not lie. There's more and more retail investors selling to more and more institutions and whales. That's what's happening right now. Hopefully none of you guys are falling for this because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why? Why? And if you're looking at monthly returns, man, we have one, two, three, four, five, five straight months. No, six. Well, this month is not over, but this month is looking pretty good. Plus 23%. We're in a six straight month of green. That's terrific. That's really, really terrific. And you know what we're mimicking? We're mimicking 2021, 2020 and 2021. Right. So 2020, if you look at 2020, we had these numbers, which phenomenal numbers. And then it led to here, all phenomenal numbers. Then you had a, a slight dip and then a pretty big dip and then a slight dip. And then you start, start going. Right. So 2021 obviously was a good year. 2024, just like 2021, is a having year. Well, no, I, I take that back. Having year was 2020, but you know things were a little bit disrupted in 2020 because of the COVID pandemic. But still, we had a good recovery year in 2020. 2021 was more fantastic. So this year is going to be more like 2020. However, we're just moving way quicker because of supply shock, because the institutions, ETFs, and everyone are just buying and buying and buying and buying. Even Robert Kiyosaki, he's never been this bullish on Bitcoin before. He's made a lot of, you know, Armageddon calls, the death of the dollar calls, uh, recession calls, uh, pen, uh, pandemic calls too, <laughs> but depression calls. But he's never been this bullish on Bitcoin. And he doesn't even have that many Bitcoin. He holds so much gold and silver, but he's like 100% into Bitcoin now. 100%. 100,000 by June. You know, as far-fetched as that sounds... Since we're already in February, and it seems like there's no absolutely zero way that Bitcoin could be six digits by June. I don't think it's that far fetched. This next level up could push us close to, you know, 55, 56, 58 levels. And we're not even at the having event yet. And then afterwards, and again, the supply shock, if Coinbase runs out of coin, uh, Bitcoin, man, we'll, we'll be starting to move fast really quick. Quicker than people expect. That's how it always is. Bitcoin always moves faster than people expect. People just get bored and like, ah, Bitcoin will never move. And then boom, it starts moving. Every single time. Every single time. Futures, interest levels, highest since 2021. That's saying something because November 2021 was when Bitcoin was at $69,000. So think about it. Future interest now is as high as it was back in 2021 when Bitcoin was at all time high. That's also saying something. Yeah, and then uh, take a look at this RSI for Bitcoin. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to to realize what's what's happening next, right? Again, you show this, you could print this out and show it to your family member. Like, what do you think is going to happen next? Based on previous performance, previous moves, what do you think is going to happen next, right? Again, I think we all know what's going to happen. We're, we're going to have to have an event. We're going to start blowing upwards. We may have some corrections, guys. I'm not going to say we're not going to have any correction. In fact, the fastest, faster we move, the, the bigger the corrections we can have. Those are normal. 20, 30, 35, 40% corrections could be on the table, could be coming. But that doesn't mean the run is over. In fact, that just means the run has just started, the parabolic run. So be prepared for that, but also be prepared for what's coming next. Parabolic gains, that's what's coming next. Uh, I mentioned this before many times. This is very significant how in this cycle we have done something we have never, ever, ever done in previous cycles. We have recovered faster than ever before, right before the halving event. Even though we're only two months away from having that, but this 0.618 Fibonacci level has never, ever, ever been broken before a previous having event in any of the previous cycles. And we had three of them already. That shows you how fast we are moving. And it shows you how fast we'll probably go break our previous high of 69,000. 
that was cut prematurely. I mean, it should have been a hundred thousand, but we didn't get there. That's okay. But it does does show you that we're we're gonna be right up there in no time. And if you look at if you look at this, basically what this is showing is uh, we haven't spent that much time above fifty thousand. If you look at what happened in twenty twenty one. I mean, there was a few stints above twenty, uh, above fifty two thousand, and then we fell below. And again, a few stints above where we hit sixty thousand, sixty nine thousand, and then we went below. Now we're solidly staying above, and we're ready to move. And it's not even having a vent yet. Just think about that. Think about how much more is on the table waiting waiting to come um here's another one showing us breaking out at a, the 61.8 fibonacci level and again you look at what has happened before even going back a previous cycle in 2017 we didn't go above there for long and in 2021 again we didn't stay above long this time around, we're not near peak. The last few times, it was during peak times. Right now, we're not at peak, nowhere close to it. And again, it shows you how fast we are moving right now because of the supply shock caused by the ETFs. And of course, that's all great. And it's going to be phenomenal for Bitcoin, but the alts, they're going to follow too. They're going to follow too, right? A lot of you guys are alt holders. A lot of you guys are meme holders. You're waiting for your turn. Some alts have been doing really well, but majority of alts are still kind of stagnant. Bitcoin is leaning the way, but there's no worry. Alts will get their turn, especially in a parabolic bull run and 10x, only in the beginning, right? I do think most alts will be doing at least a 10x and many will do more than that in this coming bull run. All right, so what are some of these alts that are doing well? Uh, I saw this, Coinbase Commerce is going to add Solana Lightning Network. That's obviously pretty good, Coinbase Commerce is a way to onboard, you know, Onboard users, uh, platforms, businesses, and so forth, right? And if they go add Solana as a currency, that's going to be absolutely enormous, right? So Solana, obviously one of the ones that I do, like I support because I think they're going to have a phenomenal future. That's awesome. But also we know Chainlink. Chainlink has been doing very well too. And you got mysterious people that are just loading up on link link marines getting stronger every single day and you see all these buying all from mysterious whales no one knows who they are it's kind of interesting kind of interesting but we'll see eventually someone will figure out who the whales are <laughs> could be black rock mm -hmm. themselves who knows uh also a lot of people have been focusing on ai obviously Bit sensor is leading away, but OpenAI Sora is also doing very well. OpenAI on Friday shocked the hell out of me because they produced some some footage, some text to video footage that I still don't believe that are AI generated. They're just too damn good. And if that's the future, well, it's going to be a scary future because basically anything could be shown and no one knows what's real, what's not. <laughs> Um, and a lot of people will be out of jobs. But anyways, the Sora token is blasting off and WorldCoin is blasting off. And, you know, but still, I don't like WorldCoin. It's, a, it's like a surveillance coin. They want you to, like, look into this orb and it scans your, your, your retinas uh, to prove that you're not an AI. But who wants to give up their, their retina identity to... World coin, you know, so it doesn't make much sense, but they are blowing up. Um, but I would highly stay away from it. I would not get my eyes scanned by them. Um, and also, you know, who's blowing up beam, 
Beam is at an all-time high. They're they're a, they're a young project, but they're at an all-time high. I mean, that's quite amazing, right? And that's because Beam is focused on games. And I told you guys, I think games, game narrative is going to be huge this cycle. And Beam is leading the way. They have some good partnerships with Immutable and Avalanche, obviously. They have onboarded some fantastic games. And one of their, their bigger ones, Forgotten Playland, is about to launch their own token in two days. So Beam is doing very well as well. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great projects in this space. And I think they're gonna do very, very well this parabolic bull run as well as Bitcoin. But again, don't let the big boys eat up all the Bitcoin. Okay. Don't be one of those that are selling their life-changing wealth to BlackRock, okay? That that makes no sense. You don't want to be giving up your life-changing wealth to one of the big boys that don't need it. All right, let's do some Q&A. All
Oh shit, I've been talking, man, I've been talking mute for a while. Man, you guys missed out on a great speech. <laughs> I was just talking about Coinbase and the supply shock and BlackRock. Man, I just went on and on and on. Uh, you guys missed out on a lot of stuff, which I'm not going to repeat, but thank you for all the super chats. Uh, what's your view on Enzyme? Do you think it could cross its latest last high or it's dead now? Uh, I don't know what that coin is. Um, man, they've been around since 2017. I mean, good for them that they're still around around 44 million. Um, I don't know what project this is. Safeguard operations and streamline and management of digital assets um, provides organizational robustness, robustness, robustness. Um, yeah, it's, like, it's almost like a portfolio manager. Yeah, not 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 something I'm interested in. What do you put 10K into stacks or ETH stacks? And someone did ask the super chat that I was answering about having um, 10K in ETH or something like that. And if he should diversify, my answer was um, if that's the only thing you hold, then, then yeah, you should think about it. But ETH has been coming up recently because of ETF hype. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think there's, there will be a lot of good performers that outperform ETH, but ETH itself could be doing quite well too. How do you mute yourself in the middle of the show? It's because I mute after I talk so I could get a drink and then I'm supposed to unmute and I forgot to. Bling man. Um, do you hold any Welsh coin? First meme on BDC. No, I do not. If you're gonna hold a meme coin, you gotta hold it. You gotta hold it on a chain that's very popular. If you, there's a lot of memes that are coming out on a lot of these bigger chains, but they're not super popular, so they're not doing well. That doesn't mean that it won't. They won't ever do well. But, you know, right now, all the memes are doing well. Solana. <laughs> what do you think about Prime? Echelon Prime is it, it's a game, right? Pretty big. They're pretty big. Decent movement. What's all time? That is all time. What chain are they on? If they're on ETH. Which it looks like they are. They might be in trouble. I haven't heard much about this game at all. 
Uh, man, that's not right. They only have 13k followers on a project that's worth almost 400 million. There's something. There's something wrong there. Then, then they're not really doing well with their socials at all. They should be at least a hundred thousand followers. So, that that's a big turn off. Nasty evolution portfolio is fifty percent Bitcoin, forty E, ten percent alts. Thought about selling a bit of ETH or Bitcoin for this bull run. Fellow car guy with a five hundred fifty wheel horsepower Evo. There's not many people that still drive Evos around. Um, awesome. I've never driven an Evo before. I need to. Um, but as for, I mean, your holdings is fine. If you want to sell off a little bit of ETH and go more into alts, I'd say it's fine. If you're thinking about selling Bitcoin, it's also fine. But I would sell ETH before I sell Bitcoin. Uh, Gibson, new member. Welcome. Um, are you bullish on Dimension? They've, they've run up a lot recently. Jump man. I did see it. I answered you while I was in mute. Uh, a lot of projects, they just re-lock their tokens because they don't need it. And I have a feeling AVAX may do that because they have a ton of money in their treasury already. So there's no reason for them to sell tokens. So they may be doing that. Not guaranteed, but a lot of projects have done that. Like Polygon did that before. So AVAX may do that too. Uh, let's see. Uh, net, wor net worth. Is it, I'm assuming it's a meme coin. No, I'm not human. What? Johnny, are you just asking a general question or are you asking like about a coin? Because I can't find net worth. What net worth is FU money in your opinion? Second day. What, what, what do you mean by the second day? And why did you put dollar net worth? So again, I don't quite understand. If you're talking about in general, I don't know, a few millions, right? Um, but I don't know if you're, if that's what you're asking. It sounds like you're asking about a coin that I can't find. Yesterday's all-star game was very disappointing. And Halliburton should have won, not Dame. Even though he hit some big shots, but Halliburton was like, like, I don't know how many threes he made. He set the tone for the East. And it was an indie. He should have won. But anyways, I mean, All-Star Game has turned into such a joke. I don't know why they don't play any D. They could actually play D if they wanted to, but they don't. Gustavo, Gustavo, do you think all coin season is coming due to Bitcoin's move? Yes. Yes, I just got done saying that. And uh, market prediction for Beam, three to four billion. I think that's pretty easy for them. They're already above a billion. They're closing in two billion, three to four. Very easy for them. Uh, let's see here. I've driven a STI before, or like a really modified um, WRX. The turbo lag is crazy. It takes a while before that those turbo. The, the 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 I think it's one turbo. It wasn't twin turbo, but yeah, it's just one turbo. It took a while before the the turbo lag um, disappeared. I don't know if that's how it is with Evos. What do you think Zeta would do this bull run? I don't follow them carefully, Kerrigan, so I can't really say. Barry, are you a big boy in terms of BDC holding? I like to think so.
How do you feel about Manta? Do I like? I do, actually. I think they're promising. There, there are a lot of promising L2s, right? And they can all do well this cycle. But Manta does seem like they're, they have a lot of traction. Their TVL is growing. They're like number three or four in TVL um, for L2. So that they definitely have that. Is Binance Philippines going to get banned? I I have no idea. I have no idea. Do Cardano holders hate profits as much as XRP holders? Stop it. Uh, don't do them dirty like that. Uh, any thoughts on Luvium and Gala? I uh, continue to DC both of these. I, I'm in the money on Illuvium, but Gala is disappointed. I, I've given up on Gala, to be quite honest, because of the lawsuits. But maybe they can still come back. And I also don't like the fact that they came out the Gala music token, which absolutely unnecessary. They could have just used Gala in their music endeavor, too. Um, give AI Tech a look. Just I I answered you already. Just because something goes up doesn't make it good. I'm sure there are some whales probably pumping it. Uh, thoughts on pixels? Just got on your stream. I have no thoughts about pixels. They're cheap and quick, and that's why they're popular. Yeah, not anymore, though. Are you talking about Evos? Or I don't know what you're talking about, Shady. But, I mean, it's been a while since the Evo came out in the U.S. <laughs> or are you talking about STIs or WRXs? I mean, you used to see STIs and, and uh, Evos, like, everywhere. But now, no more. I think Subaru still produces STIs, or at least our WRXs, but no one cares about them anymore. Now it's like either hot hatches or like the, the pony cars, right? But even like Camaro's discontinued. So you really just have like, and the Challenger's discontinued. So you really just have the Mustang that's left. And then you have like the fun little hot hatches, like um, the Type R or the the Corolla GR, and they're fantastic cars. Uh, Welsh is up twenty x for me so far. Um, don't you believe there's more potential? Sure, sure, it could it could go up another two hundred x. But they're memes. Memes, you just don't know. Sometimes they seem like they'll just go up forever until they dump like 50% on you immediately. I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful with memes. Be careful relying too much on memes. Unless you know for sure that they have a well-established community and they're not going to go to zero, right? Like, I feel like cock is like that. I feel like snack is like that. I know I talked to the founders and I know they're not pump and dumpers and they are continuing to build no matter what. But other memes, man, I, I've seen so many do very well. They go all the way up to the moon and everyone says, well, go bye bye bye. And sometimes they do fall for a FOMO and then they just dump to like next to nothing. So just be careful. If you make if you made a lot of profits, you should think about taking some out at least. Our ADA and XRP alerted profits, John, has someone asked that already. And Johnny, I didn't know what, you didn't answer what I said before about your question about net worth. Was that a project or you're just asking about it? Uh, Evan, thank you. Uh, next soul is SATA chain, layer zero blockchain, launches in April, currently on BNB network, and ERC project that has banking debit incoming solid. Uh, because you said BNB and ERC, the answer is no. Dueling banjos question. Are we in a 2020 and 2021 part of the cycle? See, that's a good question. Uh, we're supposed to be in a 2020 part of the cycle, but we're moving as if we were in the 2021 part of the cycle because we're just moving really quickly, like super, super quickly. So, um, 
so yeah, hopefully that answers. Super, it became a Dow. Not really interested in it. Kronos, not interested in Kronos either. Why are gas fees still high since they went to approve a stake? That was never meant to solve it. That's just a stepping stone. Um, that was necessity before they implement some kind of like sharding thing that will actually scale them. That's why L2s and other L1s have gotten so popular. Now dApps, they don't just launch on ETH anymore. They can launch on so many, so many other chains. Uh, what do you think about Aerodome Finance base chain? People have asked me about it before. I just don't pay a lot of attention to base because there's no token, so I can't benefit from it. I wish that Coinbase would airdrop like base tokens to base users. I don't think they'll ever do that because they're in the US, so it'll be impossible for them to do it without the SEC coming after them. So because of that, I don't really pay attention to base stuff. Evan, uh, connect. I don't know why I keep saying network error. The HTTP of Web3, build Web3 applications and securely interact with users, tokens, and other applications on any changes like the web. Um, okay. So, are, are they their own now one? So it seems like they just have a lot of bridges into a lot of projects. Basically all EVM projects. Every single one that, that's listed is EVM. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It's like a L1 that's made for apps that, I don't know, it provides code base to connect to all these other chains that are all EVM, something like that. I, I don't know. Because I said it launched first on BNB and then ERC, yeah. If it's launching on ERC or both, I mean, uh, I don't see how they're going to be a Solana competitor. Bruce, are the rumors about you being heavily invested in XRP true? No. I don't own any XRP. Zero. My wife is about to purchase a Lexus RX hybrid. Is it a decent buy? Sure. Sure. It's, it's nothing that gets me too excited, but it's a decent everyday car, if that's what you're asking. Um, just not something I would buy. Like, I, yeah, maybe I would buy it for my, like my, like my mom, but um, it's, there's nothing that stands out about it. Let's just put it that way. LS, Elastos, my answer is no. <laughs> They've been around since 2017. They have never done anything. Anything. They got hot in 2018 or something because they were like, or 2017 because they were showing some TV box that will go change them. That never amounted to anything. Tim, yes, that's true. People post like these random tokens that are either pumping or things that, you know, they have held on to since 2017 
or just random ones that they've seen other people talk about. So I don't know. I know a lot of coins, but I, 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 I don't know the 2.2 million coins out there. Which would you uh, get for your son? CHR, Chromia, or Orange? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't know. I like them equally on this on this scale. I have a Lexus RX for snow. Absolutely the most boring car to drive ever. I mean, that's kind of how it is. All Lexus cars are like that. Lexus doesn't make any exciting cars. They just make reliable cars and very boring cars. Um, and that's fine for most people. But that, that's why, like, what I think about cars I want to buy, I never think about a Lexus. <laughs> Ever. And I try very hard. I'm like, is, are there any good Lexus cars to look at? And my, I always come down to no. Uh, which altcoins are you most bullish on? Uh, you gonna have to watch more of my streams. I cover them all the time. So, or tune in Wednesday night and you, you can see my DCA portfolio. <clears throat> Looking to buy a 2025 Cadillac CT5 Blackwing with a manual. Um, that looks pretty good. Anything manual is good. I don't know about Cadillac though. You know, I, I, I don't know if I trust Cadillac. I mean, if you just want a fun, well, I mean, here's the thing. I was going to say, if you want a fun car, you get a Corvette, but Corvettes don't have manuals. So Cadillac, that may be the only manual GM car with that supercharged engine. So, I mean, you may be right about that, but still it's a Cadillac. So I don't know if I trust Cadillac. Dennis, I would love to have old school muscle cars, but you need to work on them. And I don't have time to work on them. Maybe someday, but I really would love to get a SS, a 69 SS Camaro. That's like my dream muscle car. But again, I don't, I don't have the time to be spending on them. Maybe after 2025 when I retire, <laughs> maybe then, but not right now. I just want cars, pretty cars to look at that I could get in and drive and not worry about. What happened to my ETH leverage trade? Well, that one didn't end up well. So I, I put in some few other ones. Um, so if you look at it, yeah, this is doing pretty well. So I have this open on Tapit, Avas. I opened this up, I forgot, I went on Friday or something or Saturday when things dipped a little bit. Some of these I opened before. Stacks obviously doing pretty well, 436%. Um, Celestia up 50, Solana up 110, BDC up 146, and Avax up 52. The Stacks one is a killer. That's pretty good. Can you check VKA? Is it on Arbitrum? Is it this one? I don't even know what project. It's not even listed. Delta neutral perpetual deck strategies for multiple perpetual DEXs. So it's just strategies for for leverage DEXs. I, I don't know, Captain. That doesn't sound very appealing. If you're going to leverage, just leverage. Why do you need a project that gives you leverage strategies? Is it like a bot? Bruiser's for framing. Cadillac is a GM, bro. As long as it ain't a Ford, you're good. No, I... I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest. I'd rather buy a Ford than a GM car any day. 
The only GM car I'm interested in really is the Corvette. I think Corvette is awesome, but every other car, when it comes to trucks, I get a Ford truck over any GM truck any day. I really would love, to, I think this, this year when it warms up, I'll probably get a Corvette. I, I, I don't even think I'm going to get the, the Z06. I think I just get a regular vet because honestly, when you're driving around, no one will be able to tell the difference. They look so similar. You have to be a true car guy to notice that's a little bit wider and it's a Z06. They both sound great. A regular vet is plenty fast, get a convertible drop top, um, and it's nice and cheap. You get one in uh, sixty thousands now. Is those they just like overproduced it? Like before, a few years ago, it was still like you had to pay over MSRP to get it. Now the prices have come down so much. You can get ones in the sixties. So I think I'm gonna do that because I can't drive my Ferrari everywhere. I'm just too scared to do that. I'd just drive a bed everywhere. Phil. Phil Moore, I'm closing in on one BDC. What small cap would you recommend to gamble a little bit, a little afterwards? Uh, like mid caps or small caps? If you're talking about small caps, there are a few. Uh, AIT, AIT protocols in the AI space, they're doing quite well. They're blowing up. That's one of them. I mean, there's a, there's a lot, but that that's one that's pretty promising. You can gamble a little bit into a meme like cock, which I think is going to do really well in the bull market. And there's several others. <laughs> Gaining a little momentum back. But I think tomorrow when Wall Street opens, that's when we may see another, another leg up. The two trucks I really want is a Raptor R and then a Bronco R or just a Bronco Raptor. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I would love to get those if Ford dealerships didn't charge over MSRP. Even you used ones that are like close to new prices. There's no GM, man. Come on. Who's going to pick a Silverado over a F-150? Let's be honest, okay? F-150 is the best-selling truck on the planet for like 30 years for good reason. Ford knows how to build trucks. <laughs> Period. Okay? I mean, Silverado is now the third best-selling full-size truck in the U.S. They fell even behind Rams. And Rams have always had the worst reliability. Mm -hmm. So think about that. So GM truck owners, they're third in the U.S., not even second. Pretty soon, Tundras will probably be surpassing Silverados. How much cock am I holding? I would say a decent amount. I prefer the Titan V8. Man, the Titan V8 was good. The first gen was good. And then every gen afterwards sucked. They came out their their diesel, their, their small block diesel V8. And that was the worst engine ever created. And, uh, and they basically killed themselves in the truck market. Juan, I already, Jan, Jan or Juan, Jan. I already revealed it. To this person. It was Pith. It was Pith. And this person guessed it like almost immediately. Almost everyone got it this time. Everyone guessed it right. I, maybe I gave too many clues. All right, guys. To conclude, Coinbase supply is dropping like a rock. It's no surprise, but it's pretty alarming how fast 
it's going down. It dropped like half within a matter of months. And the supply shock that I've been talking about, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. So make sure you don't get driven out in the market, guys. Stay strong. And I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Last two questions. Uh, do you think the success of BDC ETFs that the big boys are going to push for more like LINK? No. They'll push more for like ETH first before LINK. But maybe eventually. And what do you think about Cartesi? Neutral. Neutral on them. All right, guys. Have a good one. Take care.